Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today we are going to install and work with a Kubernetes cluster and we're going to con connect a Ceph cluster to our Kubernetes pod. First off, I want to switch over to my monitor here. Uh, we can look at this repository. I've prepared this. This repository is something that you can follow along with. It's in the link of this description for this video. So you can follow along and do as I do when I install this Ceph cluster. I will talk about each of the different points, but I will not go back and forth between the description and the actual installation. So here we have a node. It's just a Debian environment, nothing extra. I've just installed everything, give, given it a name and so on, just for simplicity. But it's a base install of Debian. Uh, I have a couple of files uh, prepared here for the pod and secret that I will use later on. But you can just add, take those from the repository and add your information in order to get started. So first off, we need to install the Ceph packages. And first, we need the key for the Ceph uh, environment. So this is the release key that we download and install in our environment. We need to do that as wrote. So I will do that with the sudo. So now that key is installed. Then we will echo into our Ceph list that we want to use the Pacific version of Debian for Ceph. And then it will just add the release here. It's Buster in my case and it will push that into the uh, Ceph list. So now we have that as a part of our environment. Next up, we do an apt update in order to get the new packages into our system so we can install Ceph. And then we just run sudo apt install Ceph. It will ask you, will you install all of these packages? Yes, of course. I want to run Ceph on my environment, so I need all these packages. And it will take a little while, so we just wait for this. And we are back. So now we have installed the Ceph, uh, in <laughs> Ceph uh, packages. And this is important to be installed and maintained on all your Kubernetes nodes. So you need to have it on all nodes. This uh, installation I will do now is a single node installation that Redpill, um, a site called Redpill, actually created. So huge props to them, redpill.com. And you can find their um, uh, guide there if you want to follow that. It has some cha changes from mine. So I have changed some of their things that didn't work for me. So mine is perhaps a little bit newer, uh, but it's a really good guide uh, for adding one uh, local uh, node. And first off, you need to add uh, bridging for your network devices. And I guess I need to do this with sudo. Let's, let's go into uh, uh, su mode. So we are roots, so we are able to do whatever we like. So let's cat over to that and then run system control system. So it will reload all those settings and we will have that bridging information in our uh, system already. Next up, uh, this cluster node doesn't like when you have a swap device. So I run swap off here on all swap devices. You can also go into your FS tab and disable them. So if we edit etc FS tab and we look into the swap here, I will just add a hash mark between uh, at the beginning of that one. And yeah, we have saved that. So now I have updated that file. Uh, next up, we need to install Docker. So we will create the Docker directory. Uh, and it already exists here. I guess it got installed by the Ceph uh, environment. Then I need to add a daemon configuration here uh, for native C group and so on. And uh, op uh, information for... And storage driver and so on. And then I do an up update again. In order to have the latest packages, I will install apt transport HTTPS, uh, CR certificates, curl and GNU uh, PG2. And those are important for the Docker environment works. So those are the dependencies or so on for the, this uh, install. 
Then I will install the key for Docker and we will do as we did before, create a Docker list. Let's see here, uh, like that. Here it says stretch um, and I will keep that at the moment. Doesn't really, oh, I can change it to Buster. Doesn't really matter. And then we do update the stretch packages. I haven't really noticed that they were uh, stretched there um, earlier and it actually worked, but we can try, try with the updated Buster environment that's living a little bit on the edge. I haven't run this specific um, thing here, but if we get some failure, we can bug fix it. And that's a learning experience as well. Uh, so when we have installed the Docker packages, that should not take that long of time. So now we have installed the Docker packages. Let's go on to install the Kubernetes packages. Again, we need another key for uh, Kubernetes. We add that. And in the Kubernetes list, we will add apt Kubernetes IO and um, Kubernetes Semyal here. So it's even newer. And then we will do an update again. And then when we are done with that, we will install kubelet, kube admin and kube control in order to install the different things that we need for our Kubernetes uh, cluster here. And that will take a little bit of time as well. So now we have all the tooling we need, all package we need for a Kubernetes cluster. We have prepared with the Ceph information as well. So let's initialize a little bit of a cluster here. We run kube in it uh, with the pod network sit here. And this is, so we will enable, uh, create a cluster I only have one CPU on this node. I need to change that. So I'll be right back. I will need to restart this one. And we are back. So that could have been why it took a little bit longer to install packages this time because I only had one CPU and two gigabytes of memory. When I ran this earlier, I had two CPUs and eight gigs of memory. So I just changed the virtual environment to have more CPUs and more memory. Uh, so now we have two and eight and that will hopefully just work with this initialization of the cube network. And we are back. So now I have initialized my cluster here. And if we look at the last line here, it tells you how to add more nodes into to your cluster if you like. And you also get a lot of different other nifty uh, tips here. This is something that we will do as well. Copy over some information here so we can actually run this as not a super user. So if I switch over here, log out, and then I run uh, make cube and do this copy of the config and also type in that uh, the information for sudo and do that. So now I can run all the information locally without any problem. Another in interesting thing is I can run source, cube control, completion bash. That will give me control, uh, completion in my bash environment. So I, when I run cube control commands, it can actually complete the rest of the uh, things here. Uh, then I want to apply a network called flannel. And this is the latest file that they have in their repository. And this is something for interconnection between your different pods. So it's configuration, so the different pods can talk to each other. And not strictly uh, required, but it's a good thing to have in your cluster. And we will wait a little bit here so it actually starts everything up. It's initializing the flannel at the moment. It will also add a core DNS. So each of the pods will have their names as their IPs. You can easily talk with them within your cluster. So now everything has started up there. Then I need to untaint the master in order to allow it to install things on this uh, node and not have this node as a non-installable one because then nothing will happen when you install your pods. Uh, next up, we want to go over to our specific Ceph cluster and create a new user there. So if we switch over to uh, this repository again that I have followed, 
and go down to the, almost the bottom here, we see that in our Ceph cluster we need to create a secret. We run this command in our Ceph cluster. That will give us a new user called Kubernetes. So that's called a client. So the type client, the user Kubernetes, should have the uh, directory Kubernetes available to it and you should be able to read right to it. So this command you run, then you will get something out called the, this key. You will see it will give you just that key and a little bit more information, but that's easily found. So you need to go over to your Ceph secret and add that key there. So if we go up here and go into the secret file, you see that it's pretty much APA version, kind secret, metadata, Ceph secret, and then string data, and this specific secret that you need to add. But the, <laughs> the example for this just said data here, and that did not work. So I had to change that to string data. It took a while for me to actually find that information in a lot of threads and so on. So uh, when we have done that, if we switch over here, uh, we can run cube ctl apply and then dash f for file and ceph secret. So now I have applied that secret into my ceph environment. Next up we want to apply the pod. So let's go back here and look in the pod configuration instead. First you need to give it a name of course up here I had said ceph fs example. And then you need a container and you give that a name as well, Ceph pod, why not? And you need an image. I have said just install an Apache HTTPD server. So I have something running that I could mount, go into and look at the mount. And then I have a volume mount here that has a mount path, and, uh, mount Ceph FS and then the name of Ceph FS. And the volumes defined down here is the CFFS. So this is the same name here, you need to be that. Then I add some of the monitors. I prepared which monitors I will use in my environment. Then we have the user, that's the client.username. So I will add that here, Kubernetes. And then we have the file that we added earlier, this Ceph secret. So that's the name in that file. Um, so this, the, this is the secret reference if we want this to be read only and then the path in the Ceph cluster that we want to mount to. In this case it's slash Kubernetes. So when we have prepared that we go back here and we will apply the Ceph pod. And uh, if we go up here and check all the namespaces we can wait for this pod to be deployed and running. So now that is up and running and we want to go in and actually check that it has mounted. So I run cube control, exec, std in the TTAY and also the name of the pod up here that I want to go into. And then I want to run bin bash. So if I run that, yeah, it's not called Ceph anymore. It's Ceph FS example. So now I am in that pod in the USR local Apache directory. So this is a default Apache uh, <laughs> Docker container. So it doesn't have anything extra in it. But if I go to mnt cephfs and this directory contains the file working.txt which I prepared in my Ceph environment earlier on. So it mounted this correctly and I now can use my Ceph cluster to store and read data files as I like. So this was what I wanted to cover today, how to mount your Ceph FS into your Kubernetes cluster. I hope that you found this interesting. I hope that you learned something today. If you have any comments or suggestions, leave them down in the comment section down below. If you like this video, give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. And I really hope to see you in the next video.